Kenatato Kato, good evening. In breaking news tonight, the coalition has claimed its first public sector resignation, with a board member of New Zealand On Air resigning after making a political post on social media slamming new Deputy Prime Minister Winston Peters. Andrew Shaw was a TVNZ executive for many years and was given a New Zealand Television Legend Award in 2020. Political editor Jenna Lynch joins us now. And Jenna, what's gone on here? Andrew Shaw is a, was a board member of New Zealand On Air and this evening News Hub made some inquiries about a post he had made on LinkedIn criticising Winston Peters' attacks on the media. Winston Peters yesterday made incorrect claims that the media had been bribed through the Public Interest Journalism Fund. In Shaw's post, he said of Peters, and I quote, he is not truthful, he is not accurate, he is malicious, and he is here on behalf of international tobacco. His return is the worst of this gang of thugs. Now, as we learned through the sacking of health boss Rob Campbell, public sector board members are required under their code of conduct to be politically neutral. New Zealand On Air has sent us a statement saying that uh, uh, that Shaw's comments were not a reflection of the agency, that the agency is a non-partisan agency that has worked constructively with governments of all hues for 34 years. They said Shaw unreservedly apologises for the comments. He accepts it's the wrong thing to publish his personal political views and has tendered his resignation immediately. But while Shaw was quick to apologise... Winston Peters was anything but doubling down on his anti-media rhetoric today, this time in front of the Prime Minister. Off with a hiss, a roar, or more, an awkward silence. The coalition government getting its feet under the big cabinet desk. We're looking forward to having a good meeting. Yep. And straight down to its secret cabinet agenda. What's the plan for the meeting today? Uh, that stays in this room. What's said in Cabinet stays in Cabinet is one of the most sacred rules in the Cabinet Manual, a.k.a. the Minister's Rule Book. Are you confident that every single person in this room is going to stick to the Cabinet rules for the whole term? I'm absolutely sure they will. But already he's got one particular Minister playing mischief. Yeah, cheap shot here. <laughs> Yesterday, just after he'd been officially sworn into the role, his Deputy Prime Minister took it upon himself to issue direction to state-owned broadcasters in response to a question about his policy about public agencies narrowing the use of te reo Māori. Well, we'll, we'll see Māori. the speed of which TVNZ and RNZ, which are taxed by our own, understand this new message. We'll see the, whether these people... They are independent with broadcasters. With the media and journalists, are they, they independent? They are independent broadcasters, Well, Mr. isn't that fascinating? I've never seen the evidence of that the last three years. The independence of TVNZ and RNZ from political interference is spelled out in law. The Radio New Zealand Act 1995 states that no responsible minister or any other minister may give a direction to the public radio company in respect of the gathering or presentation of news or the preparation or presentation of current affairs programmes. TVNZ Act has the same clause. Luxon, were you comfortable with the comments that Mr Peters made about the media yesterday? Uh, I didn't see those comments, but I'm excited to get to work with this team. For Mr Luxon's benefit, here's more of what he said. You can't defend $55 million of bribery. Okay. So, no, no, you cannot defend $55 million of bribery. He's talking about the Public Interest Journalism Fund, a contestable $55 million aimed at funding projects, journalism roles and training in New Zealand newsrooms. The fund overall had five goals it had to achieve, inform and engage the public, accurate, accountable and fair coverage reflecting all sectors of the community, promote the treaty principles, reflect New Zealand's cultural diversity and encourage a robust, sustainable media. Some areas of reporting were specifically excluded from the fund, including, crucially, national political coverage. As the media were packing up to leave today, Peter's went in again. Before you ask one more question, tell the public what you signed up to to get the money. This is called transparency. OK? Appropriate, Mr Luxon. Thank you. All right, ready to go? We'll take that as a no comment. Oh, OK, Jenna. So how long can Christopher Luxon keep up his defence that he hasn't seen Winston Peters' latest comments? Well, it's over from the first time that he says it. If we are to believe that 
Christopher Luxon had not seen the comments from Winston Peters that were well publicised, then either there is a level of incompetence going on for him, from his team or there is willful ignorance. And he is about to learn very quickly that he needs to say across everything that his ministers are saying publicly, lest he be tripped up by one of them going rogue. And that includes Winston Peters. If this was another minister, the assumption is they would be raked over the coals for it. And there could be some leeway given for Christopher Luxon settling himself into the role, getting his feet under this desk and finding out where the boundaries lie. But while this is his first rodeo, as Winston Peters keeps reminding us, it is not his. He knows the rules, he knows how to bend them, and he will be testing the limits of where Luxon will let him go. So Luxon's first big test as Prime Minister is a forced one, where he will let Winston Peters go, where he sets the boundary for him, and whether there is one rule for everyone else in Cabinet and one rule for Winston Peters. Political editor Jen Lynch, live from Parliament, Tinakwe.